Hello? This is a collect call from Life of a Lifer. To accept this call, press 5 now. Hey, hello, and welcome, friends and family. Taylor Conley here on Life of a Lifer. Today, I got a special guest with us, Marcus Timmons, a.k.a. Big Herc, from the series. You may have seen it, but if you haven't, you definitely got to check it out. It's a YouTube series called Fresh Out, Life After the Penitentiary. He was a formerly incarcerated man. We're going to hear from him today. You know, it's been a while since I've made a new video, made a new uh, podcast entry, because... I don't know if you've known or not, if you follow us on social media, but I ended up getting the coronavirus. So I've been, I've been, uh, isolating and I've been, I've been in lockdown for about six weeks now. So it hasn't been fun, but you know, it is what it is, man. It's an epidemic out there and it's real. And I, I'm a living testament of it, but we're glad to have you with us today. Marcus, how you doing, man? Well, I'm doing pretty good, man. No complaints. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, my wife was able to go down there and meet you in, in Arizona, and, uh, you know, it's pretty cool how we were able to come together and, and collaborate. We're going to have you on the cover of our magazine this quarter coming out at the end of the quarter, uh, Design Inside Design Conviction Magazine. And, you know, I just really I, – I read your story. I heard about what you're doing, and I really find a lot in common. I'm serving life in prison in here, and – uh I found that doing positive things isn't always the most popular thing, but I knew that I wanted to do something with my life. And I see that, you know, you kind of took that same road, man, and, and you've you've been able to do a lot with yourself. So I'd like to hear from you. Um, yeah, man. Um, you know, I did uh, eight years, eight months in the feds for bank robbery. And, um, you know, I've always been a, a person that had, like, an exceptional amount of ambition but I put it in the wrong direction because of just what I was uh, focused on. I put that dire- that energy into the, you know, negative into negative, uh, you know, negative channels, and um, it wasn't like I was a bad kid. I was a straight A student, man. Um, you know, school was always something to me. It was it wasn't it wasn't hard. It was a, you know, if I applied myself, it was easy. And um, you know, before I got involved in anything negative. As far as crime, um, I've tried multiple businesses. I, I did a lot of things that were very creative as far as just, uh, you know, art, you know, clothing, um, designing skateboards, bikes, um, designing shoes. Um, I was always entrepreneurial. So I've always been a hustler, you know, before I sold any drugs or did anything like that. But, um, you know, I utilized my time in prison to transform myself spiritually, mentally, and, um, just, you know, basically re, redefine myself as a person. And, um, you know, it takes a lot of discipline. You know, there's a lot of outside influences there that want you to be a certain way. And when you don't fit with the norm, you, you catch a lot of slack. And, um, I was up for it though, because, you know, I wasn't going to let prison define me and I wasn't going to let my past define me. Therefore, I was on a mission to just create a whole nother uh, me when I got out and that's what I did. And that's when I came up with fresh out was while I was in prison, um, walking, the, walking the yard, you know, thinking about what I was going to do when I got out. So I just, I, I created a vision, uh, formulated a plan and I executed. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's a, you know, that's kind of like a model that I think is a lot of people could follow that model and have, success having that ambition and drive and you know you you also have a partner right like you you guys created the the series together isn't that anthony yeah yeah big ant my partner i met him um over a decade ago and um when i met him i was still in the halfway house i was uh wow. actually catching the bus to the gym and um the, the halfway house was in south central the gym was in Studio City, and so I would actually, you know, catch the bus all the way to a, a nicer part of town where I could network, and I ended up meeting the aunt. We became friends, and I told him about the idea, and we brainstormed on how we would go about, you know, putting together a plan to shoot our first episode, 
And uh, I happened to find somebody in my compartment complex that was a videographer. We got him, and we kind of told him what we wanted to do. And together, me and Ant put together uh, our first episode, and that was back in 2013 when nobody else was shooting prison content. So we kind of kicked it off. And, um, you know, we've been in the game now going on eight years, and we've just grown and exponentially. And, man, we got everything from – supplement line of uh, health products, clothing, and um, we're working on some other things that are about to be explosive. Wow, man. That's cool. I didn't, I didn't know. How, I was going to ask you how long you've been doing it for. So you've been doing it for about eight years, and, and it's really cool that you've stuck with it because I know it, it wasn't easy when you started out, right? I mean, these things don't no, I mean, take off. You Anything you do in life – that's going to be rewarding, that can't be taken away from you, you have to be able to, I call it, hustle in an invisible realm. You know, when you talk about making money, when you talk about becoming a multimillionaire, you're not second generation, you're first generation, you have to be doing something that you feel that long term it's going to pay off and you'll be rewarded, but you have to believe in it. And if you believe in it and the universe knows you believe in it, it's going to give it to you, but if the universe knows you're lying and it knows that you're not really serious about it, like say, for instance, I was doing fresh out, but, you know, here and there I'm I'm trying to actually do other things that's going to compromise fresh out. It knows that I don't really believe in fresh out. Therefore, fresh out's never going to turn into anything more than a hobby. You know, I believed in it, and I knew that fresh out's going to be a billion-dollar company one day. Therefore, I continue to put – my my blood, sweat, and equity into it, and I know that at the end of the day, as long as we still put our efforts in, it's going to be what we want it to be, and that's the difference. A lot of people don't know about hustling in an invisible realm because they're used to getting a the paycheck. They're used to getting that comfort. They're used to getting that, that, that little pat on the back, and I never got that, and I never – I don't work like that. I like to work against the gun. You know what I mean? I like to have – things on the edge. And I feel that by doing that, if I took a risk and robbing a bank, what is, what am I doing? What, what is the risk in doing a business? Right. Now that's a beautiful so, way to look at it because you can put so much energy and effort into doing the wrong things and taking risks that are going to wind you up in the penitentiary for decades. It's not life sentence. And then, you know, but you're scared to go and take a risk to do something that, is going to benefit you in the long run and all, and you don't have anything to lose really. Exactly. You know? so what, exactly. Why not? Why not do it? Exactly. Like that? And, and you've done that and you're a prime example of, of what that looks like in real life. So, I mean, I commend you, man. I, I really do. I, I see your story. I see what you've done and support it wholeheartedly because I believe a lot of the same concepts, you know, being in prison, for the last 15 years has certain limitations and stigmas stuck on it from the beginning, but I've been able to look past that and really create something while still in prison that is something that other people are noticing as well, and that inspires people. So that's, how you, I think, how you really make change and how you really get something going is to actually see it in progress. And, and when people see what you're doing in progress and it inspires other people who've been in prison who, you know, they think that maybe there's not a way for them to do it just because they have that felony now, you know, and a lot of opportunities close to them. But when one opportunity closes, another one opens up, you just got to go out and get it and create it for yourself. Yeah, you, you want to be a living testament. I mean, you can't talk about being a professional boxer, bro, and you're sitting at home and you got a bag of Doritos. You know what I mean? You can't you can't be a a life coach talking about, hey, I can teach you how to make millions, and then I, I see you walk around the corner and you get in a fucking Prius. You know what I mean, dude? You gotta be you gotta be the real deal. You know what I mean? And if you're the real deal, you will execute and people will follow. And like you said, you will be an example. You know, and that's one of the biggest things I always say: lead by example. And so, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't talk anything I can't do. And, you know, when, when kids, you know, talk about this and that, it's like, dude, I've done all that plus some. So when guys try to feed you this little, 
you know, these little illusions and this little fake prophecies. It's like, you know, I could, I could punch holes in that, but I'm not like some OG with missing teeth. Yeah, man, with a, with a 40 ounce telling old war stories and I'm living at my mama's house. You know what I'm saying? You know, sleeping right. on the couch, you know, it's like you, you gotta, you gotta be about it if you want people to, you know, feel that, hey, you are somebody who brings the truth. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I'd like to, I, I know you talked a little bit about some of the things that you do kind of, um, as well as fresh out that complimenting, you got like a clothing line, you got like some product line, some supplement lines, you said, and, and some other things. And I would like to know what's, what's coming in the future. Like what, what's your next goal that you're striving for? Um, next goal is for fresh out to be a billion dollar company, man, you know, to be an actual, um, a major brand as far as network, um, offering opportunities to other influencers, other people like yourself to have a voice, to share an opinion so people can see that, you know, it's worth the time and effort to support causes like yours, causes like mine, you know, doing public speaking, influences, influencing young people, you know, offering hope, you know, opportunity. You know, you got a lot of people who have a lot of resources and they're not really opening these doors because, you know, mainstream media has a different agenda. You know, that's why they push a lot of this, you know, uh, violent hip hop and, and, you know, gang culture and, you know, all this other stuff because it keeps places, um, you know, that are, you know, warehousing people. It keeps them full. You know, if they follow the message that we're putting together, that we're, that we're propagating, it's going to empty those places and it's going to create a change in society, but it's a positive change. It's a change that people should embrace. So fresh out, moving forward. With the with the supplements, with the, um, the 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 whole social media thing, with the positive uh, you know positive speaking, the speaking engagements and stuff, you know we just plan on taking it to a whole nother level and you know and just offering a lot of you know just motivating things out there that's going to change people's lives, whether it's through um, our channel, whether it's through public speaking whether it's through health, nutrition, um, wherever we can tap into and hopefully collaborating with other people like yourself that are also interested in seeing a positive change in what's going on in this country with the incarceration. Absolutely, man. That's that's amazing, and It's a beautiful thing. And I, I appreciate you, Marcus, for coming on here. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak with you and for, for this audience here to be able to hear you know, what you have to say because it definitely is valuable and what you're doing is a great thing. And I look forward to what's to come in the future, man, and and definitely look forward to hopefully being some a part of it in some way. And, uh, you know, as, as things progress, there has to be a better way in the future moving forward, regardless of all the negative influences and the negative things and that, that people – perpetrate and, and continue to try to move forward. I think that the good in the end will outweigh the bad. You know, there's always going to be bad with the good, but uh, if we can find a way to move forward and people can unify and come together more, uh, you know, we'll be able to do that and be able to make an impact that actually does create some kind of change. So I just, I appreciate it, man. And, and it was, it was real talking to you today. And I uh, look forward to what's to come in the future. Look forward to it too, bro. And like I said, this is going to be on our channel also, Fresh Out, everybody out there, you know. And uh, this is our first interview from uh, behind the wall, bro. So you got a big you got a big audience out there. And, um, you know, keep your head up, man. Keep fighting. Keep doing your thing. You got a down wife, bro. And, uh, you know, for her to make the effort to come out here, she says a lot about her character and what you guys got going on. So I commend you on that. Absolutely, man. I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, for sure. Big shout out to, to Cecilia, wife of a lifer. You know, she's definitely holding it down out there. She's, she's traveling across the country, making moves to make this thing happen and, and show her much love. You know, you can follow us on all, all our social medias, life of a lifer, design conviction, wife of a lifer. Uh, you know, we're on YouTube as well and, and, all, all the major um, podcast distribution, just subscribe.
subscribe and follow us, Fresh Out as well. You know, I, how do you find you on social media? Fresh Out. Um, fre- yeah, Fresh Out, Fresh Out series, uh, Big Hurt 916. Um, as soon as you Google us, we pop right up, man. So, you know, we'll have all the links in our description too. So you guys, uh, make sure you guys support, represent, and, um, you know, subscribe, share this, man. We're out here doing some big things and we're changing the game right now. So 2021 is going to be a big year for both of us. Absolutely, brother. I will, I will, I will let you get going here, man. I know you got a lot of things going on, busy guy, and, uh, I just appreciate your time, man. Thank you. Okay. Much appreciated, brother. You, you keep your head up. All right. Yep. This is Taylor right. Conley on Life of the Lifer and, uh, we will talk to you again soon. Hopefully, I will be out of this quarantine. This stuff is crazy right now. They got me in the gym. I'm in the gym in like a, it's like a homeless mission on cots. And there's a whole lot of people here. Everybody's got the coronavirus, and we're all just trying to make it through it, man. So uh send out our prayers, and, and hopefully everybody... Everybody gets to go back, and, and things will get back to normal as soon as we can get this vaccine out there and everything. So everybody everybody, hang in there, and, and we'll make it through this thing together. All right. Thank you for listening. I'm Taylor Conley, and this is Life of a Lifer podcast. Be sure to visit the website, lifeofalifer.com, and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode.